Hey everybody, Francisco with The Deaf Life. I realized that in the previous video, I left out something that is very important. And that is how to create a connection string for your web API using Entity Framework Core. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm a self-taught developer with over 10 years of experience. In this channel, we make videos with the intent for them to become resources for new developers. Let's go ahead and create a connection string. In the last video where we connected Entity Framework to our web API, um, I sort of had a connection string prepared and I got a question and messages on, on Instagram um, asking how to generate a connection string and I think that's something that I should have elaborated a little more on and so I'm, I'm creating this short video this should be hopefully less than five minutes to explain to explain exactly how you could create a connection string uh, so this is what the final product looks like and this is the connection string that I created for uh, the web API I created a user specifically just to be used by the API called uh, CarDB. Uh, but I'm gonna circle back a little bit and create a new user so we could generate a connection string from scratch. Uh, so let's go ahead and open SSMS. Um, I already have it open on my computer. Let's connect to our instance of SQL Server. When I originally installed SQL Server on this computer, um, I enabled Windows authentication if you want to learn how to install SQL Server on a computer, I'm going to place a link down in the description uh, so you can watch that video if you want to. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect to this database server. Okay, uh, now let's go down to security. Actually, let's display the databases that we have. Uh, so we have the CarDB, which is uh, the database that we care about. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new login. Let's specify that this is going to use uh, SQL Server authentication. Let's create a username. Let's call it con connection string user or con str user. Uh, let's select a really secure password, password one, two, three. Let's confirm that. And let's not enable password policy. Let's set the default database to CarDB, which is the one we care about. Um, then go to user mapping and let's give this user the um, owner permissions to this database and then let's click OK. OK, I guess I messed up on the password. I guess I did. Password 123, password 123. OK, hopefully they match now. Okay. Okay, the next step is to go to Server Explorer and on Data Connections, right click and let's add a new connection. Now here is where we are going to use the, the username and password that we just created. So the server is located at localhost slash SQL server. And again, you're gonna get this information uh, from whenever you install the server on your computer. This is the default setting, but you could rename it to whatever you want. So in this, like I mentioned, you can watch a video down in the description if you want to see more details on how to install SQL Server. Okay, so that is the server. Um, actually, it's not SQL Server, it's SQL Express, as you can see right here in the background. Okay, it's SQL Express. And then we, for the user that we just created, we selected SQL Server Authentication. And the username was conSTR underscore user. And the password, password123. Then click here on the drop down. Okay, so here I think we made a mistake here on the, I think I might have the user incorrect. Yep, I did have the user, I had the wrong username. I was I was uh, adding two ends and it should be only one end. And you can tell that the username was incorrect because I got a, an authentication error when I try to expand and uh, try to log into the server and try to query what databases are um, installed or running on the server. 
So let's go correct that again. And if you click on the drop down, you'll get the list of databases. Let's select CarDB. Let's test the connection. Okay, and that connection succeeded. Let's click OK and OK again. Okay, so how do we get the connection string, right? I mean, we did all that work and, and pretty much with the, the reason why we do all this work is that you can right click here, go to properties and you see your connection string right here. So you can select that, copy it, and let's open up a notepad and paste it there. For security purposes, uh, SSMS or Visual Studio, this guy is your password, so let's go ahead and just type it in. Password one, two, three, and there you have it. This is your connection string. So that is uh, one way uh, for you to get or create a connection string. Now, another of the advantages that you get by setting up this uh, new server, this new connection or database on Visual Studio is that now you could go to the Server Explorer and explore the different tables and the definition for each of the tables that you have on there. Uh, you could actually also run queries in here without having the need to switch over to SSMS for these things. Um, I gotta say the functionality in Visual Studio is a little bit limited or I guess not as advanced as what you would get if you use SSMS and that's the reason why I like using SSMS as opposed to Visual Studio. But if you don't want to be switching between one environment or one application and the other, you could just stick to Visual Studio if all you need to do is just minimal stuff. Uh, so one thing that you can do is, for example, run a new query. And here you could uh, run queries like select everything from uh, makes and execute it. And there you have the result. So, so here you could run simple queries and not have the need to leave to open up SSMS. Although, like I said, I do prefer SSMS over Visual Studio. I hope this answered your question. And if you found the video useful, please give us a like, maybe subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.